The officer didn't believe him. They caught him because he turned himself in. They caught him because he drove 1,500 miles to Pueblo, Colorado, called the Santa Cruz Police Department, told them I killed these people. They didn't believe him. They hung up on him. He called back. This time, Officer Jim Connor took his call. And at that point, he said, look, I've killed my mother. I've killed her friend. Uh, send police out to the apartment. Connor remained skeptical. But as Ed continued to rave, he decided to investigate. And so while one, the officer kept him on the phone, other officers went out to uh, his mother's and found the, the ghastly scene with his mother and Sally Hallett. Pueblo police arrested Kemper. They told me later that uh, when they told him to put his hands up, he actually put them on top of the phone booth. He's that big. Big Ed had reached the end of his road. He gave up quietly. Santa Cruz police retrieved him from Colorado. I think there are two different things going on for why he turned himself in rather than going or continuing to run. Uh, one is the very basic. I don't think he had any ability to get a job or uh, live in normal society without the help of his mother. And the second part, I believe, is notoriety. On the car ride back, Ed shocked police by confessing to butchering the co-eds. He related his crimes in minute detail. I'm thinking to myself, okay, enough is enough. You know, I'm, I'm really, I've had enough of this, but uh, he just, he just keep going and keep going. On April 30th, 1973, Ed Kemper was charged with eight counts of murder. His trial lasted three weeks. A jury would decide whether or not he was sane, and if sane, whether or not he was guilty. After listening to a taped confession of Kemper's coolly calculated killings, jurors declared him sane and guilty on eight counts of first-degree murder. Kemper was completely unemotional. He had no reaction. He had talked before about wanting to be executed, so he wasn't surprised. He was sentenced to life without the possibility of parole. In 1974, Kemper asked for a lobotomy, claiming it would cure him of his urges. The surgery would break the conditioning. It would give me a chance. It wouldn't eradicate it. It wouldn't undo it. It would put a break in it. The state refused on the grounds that it would be too dangerous. Given what he has done, it's my personal opinion, he should spend the rest of his life in prison. But he does well in that setting, and that's a good place for him. Within the adult prison system, uh, Edmund Kemper is in fact a model inmate. He does not violate any rules. He's never had any disciplinary violations. He has never done anything wrong within the prison walls. Um, nonetheless, he should never be released. Kemper currently resides at the California State Prison in Solano. To his occasional visitor, he is polite and cooperative. He spends much of his time reading books for the blind. Kemper's demons continue to haunt him, especially his bitter memories of the mother he murdered. Can you imagine the victory or the coup that if I'd wanted to stop, it would have been if I'd have said, Mom, I killed those girls. You know, your son killed the co -ist. What do you think of that? And you did it, and we did it, I did it. We did it together. In a city of...